Greetings YouTube family, welcome to another episode on the Southern African History Channel. Today we're going to be looking at Mzlikaz, the king of the Matebele people. We're going to look at how he is called the greatest king after Shaka and how he grew a small state to a big state. So let's jump into it. The great Mzilikazi was born in 1790 near Mkuze, Zululand, now South Africa. He died on September the 9th, 1868 in Ingama, Matebele land, near Blawayo, now called Zimbabwe. The South African king is the one who founded the powerful Ndebele or Matebele kingdom in what is now called Zimbabwe. He is the greatest Bantu warrior after Shaka, king of the Zulus. Mzilikazi took his Kumalo people more than 500 miles which is 800 kilometers from what is now South Africa to the region now known as Zimbabwe, creating en route an immense and ethnically diverse nation. Mzilikazi was a statesman of considerable stature, able to weld the many groups he had conquered into a strong centralized kingdom. Mzilikazi was originally a lieutenant of Shaka. He revolted against the Zulu king in 1823 and withdrew his people northward to safety from their home on the southeast coast of Africa. He traveled to Mozambique and then west into the Transvaal, settling there by 1826. Continued attacks by coalitions of his enemies caused him to move west again to what is now Botswana and in 1837 northward to the present-day Zambia. Unable to conquer the Kololo nation there, Zilikazi moved his followers, now numbering 15,000 to 20,000, eastward into what is now southwestern Zimbabwe, where he had settled Matebele land in 1840. He organized the country in a militaristic system of regimental towns strong enough to repel Boer attacks in 1847 to 1851 and to force the Boer government into the Transvaal to conclude a peace with him in 1852. Zilikazi was generally friendly to European travelers, but the discovery of gold in the Matebele land in 1867 brought a flood of Europeans that he was unable to control and that eventually led to the downfall of the kingdom. Lord Bengula was born in 1836, Mosega, Transvaal, now South Africa, and died in 1894 near Bulawayo, now Zimbabwe. He is the second and last king of the Southern African Ndebele or Matebele nation. Lord Bengula, the son of the founder of the Ndebele kingdom, Zilikazi, was unable to prevent his kingdom from being destroyed by the British in 1893. After Mzilikazi died in September 1868, the succession of Lobengula was not accepted by Mangwane, one of Mzilikazi's older sons, and some of the Izinduna, which means ships, and he succeeded to the throne only in 1870, after a period of serious civil war. Lobengula faced a rebellion in June 1870, and in 1872, he repelled an invasion by Mangwane and a pretender backed by the British in the Natal colony. Lobengula maintained Ndebele power over a huge section of Iveld, until the Witwatersrand gold discoveries of 1886 drew attention to the gold in the Ndebele kingdom and in neighboring Mashona land. Soon after a treaty of friendship signed with the British in February 1888, known as the Moffat Treaty, it was distorted by the British government in order to declare the kingdom a British protectorate. In October 1888, Lobengula signed what he thought was a limited mineral concession with a group of Cecil Rhodes of business associates led by C. D. Rudd, but it too was distorted, manipulated to appear as a gold concession to his entire kingdom. In 1889, it was accepted as authentic by the British government and used to charter the British South Africa Company, also known as the BSAC. Lord Bengula refused the BSAC access to the areas under his control. And in 1890, the BSAC invaded nearby Mashona land. After British settlers failed to find much gold in the Mashona land, Leander Starr Jameson, the BSAC administrator after 1891, induced settlers to join an invading force against Lord Bengula's Ndebele kingdom in September 1893 with promises of gold claims, land, and cattle.
To justify the invasion, mendacious claims were made that the Ndebele intended to attack Mashonaland. Faced with this attack as well as a simultaneous invasion by the British Imperial forces from the south, Lobengula banned his capital, Bulawayo, annihilated a column sent to capture him and disappeared in the direction of the Zambezi River. It is conventionally presumed that he died in late 1893 or early 1894. There is no certainty, however, and there were rumors that he had crossed the Zambezi and found refuge with the Mpenzenis Ngoni people. Lobengula's son succeeded his father in 1896 and that same year led a rebellion known as the Rising against the PSAC administration. Although the rebellion was unsuccessful, it still represented a serious and expensive threat to the BSAC and was put down only by the intervention of British Imperial troops. Okay, thank you guys for watching this episode. Um, I'm looking forward to making more videos and these before you go please go ahead click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell and I'll keep on posting more.